Hey guys, I record in 3D here. I'm um, doing that uh, CS6 video that I said I would do after that CS5 tutorial I did with the Photoshop green screen. Here is the finished image that I end up with coming off of this and this. No real editing, like fancy stuff, just basically removing the background, moving this gorilla over, King Kong, that I took from Google Images, and putting it on this picture of this bridge. So let's get started. First, I'm going to exit this. Basically, what you need to do is you need to find an image with a green background. It doesn't really need to be green, but um, green is the most common because you guys have probably heard of green screens. First thing you're going to do when you open up the, uh, the image, you're going to unlock the layer by double clicking and clicking OK, like you'll see me do with this one. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to come back to this layer. You can select this magic wand tool. You can hold down this or click W if it happens to be selected. Now you're going to enlarge it by holding Control plus <coughs> and tapping plus. You're going to select the green with the magic wand tool, and what it does is it selects like colors. Now my tolerance is set to 32. High or low tolerance basically is the different shades of green that it'll pick up and remove. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click Control D and exit out of that. I'm going to turn up my tolerance just to show you guys what it does. Now it's at 100. I click it. It's more defined around what is green and what is not. I don't know if you guys can see that, but here it is at 100. And here it is at 32. See that space along right here that you're seeing? I'm going to have it at 32. Now, look when I turn it to like a thousand. I click right here. Oh, it needs to be between zero and 255. It's so particular about what it's selecting. I'm going to click Control D and see it's selecting only that. So let's go back down to <coughs> 100. That was perfectly fine. So you're going to click there or anywhere on the green with the magic wand tool and you're going to click backspace. Now you're going to have these areas. Actually, I'm going to go Alt Control Z, which is undo. Actually, undoes mul uh, undoes multiple steps at a time. I'm going to turn this tolerance up a little bit because I want to be more uh, specific and defined. So Control D, magic wand tool, tolerance at uh, 125. There we go. Closer. I don't know. Makes a difference to me. I don't know about you guys. Alright, now I'm going to select all these other green areas, click backspace on them, and Alt Control Z because I screwed up. See, that tool is really helpful. Oh, took out some of his arm. Um, another way to be more particular about this is by using the background eraser tool, which is right here, and you can zoom in and get really particular so you can see the pixels get really particular about it and just go slow and slow but for the purpose of this video I'm not going to be really nitpicky and I'm just gonna turn this tolerance down a little bit to let's say 78 and just get the basic greens out of here so we can speed this along um, I might go with this eraser tool for a little bit. If the video is getting too long, I'll just cut this part out. Oh, that's the wrong tool right here. I'll have to turn down this size. And just kind of trace along here. It's going to be smaller along the bridge, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video. So it won't really make a difference. But if you are using if you're enlarging this image to where it'll actually matter you're using it for say a school photography project or using it in a professional sense um, then it will matter so you can get really really defined and go pixel by pixel but for right now this is going to be good so you select the move tool and oh Actually, I have to get rid of these uh, black lines. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go back to this uh, magic wand tool. Click on the black. Backspace. 
Now I'm going to go to this black and backspace. And that should be it. Let me just zoom in, make sure there's no green lines along the edges. Yeah, it looks good to me, it looks good to me. Control zero to get rid of that zoom. Now if you pick up the gorilla, it should move around freely with nothing attached. Now what you're going to do is you are going to um, grab the gorilla and you're going to move it to the other tab where you have the picture you want to put it in. See, it shows up uh, it shows up smaller because of the zoom factor. So it zoomed 195%, and this is a zoom 66.7%. Now this image is a whole lot bigger than the image of the gorilla, so it scales it. Now what you're going to do is use Control T to make it bigger or smaller. Now that works if you just want to free transform, which is like freehand. Now if you want to keep it to scale, you're going to hold Shift, grab the corner, and drag it down. That keeps it to scale, and it just locks the aspect ratio. Alright, leave it like that. I'm going to apply the transformation by clicking the Move tool and clicking Apply. Now I can freely move it around the image. So you can put it in the corner, I can put it down here, I can put it down here, I can put it down here, or up here. Or I can put it on the bridge, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right here, and I have really no use for this uh, this picture, so that's good for me. Um, enter. Now, I'm going to rotate the image just because that's what I'd like to do. So I'm going to go to uh, Edit, Transform, Rotate. Now you can see the, the where my cursor is. This is curved, so I can rotate it. That's basically what that means. It shows you what your angle is right here when I click. And that's it. Now I can rotate it around freely. And you're good. Alright, move it again, apply that transformation, and put it right on the bridge so it looks like it's grabbing the bridge. And that is basically it. Um, in the previous video for CS5, I showed you how to render this. But it is a file saved for web. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting over a cold, so. This is it. Right here, you can uh, move around the picture, stuff like that. You can click, uh, I save it as a JPEG, and I like to have maximum and then quality 100. Optimized, I don't know what else this is for. This is just how my pictures are. I always have the, um, the image proportion locked, so it's always proportionate. You click save, and you can save it to wherever you want. Desktop, recent places, whatever, and just click save. I'm not going to save it because I already did this in my previous video. But that's about it, guys. Thank you for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe. Actually, you can't rate anymore. Thumbs up. Um, be sure to leave any questions you have for me in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them all. I haven't been very good about that lately, but I'm going to get better now that I have more free time. Alright, thank you, guys.